Hey, what's up everyone? DJ Sturf here, back in Five Nights at Freddy's World with another set of tests. This time I'm testing the Find Characters chip on versus off, and there's a very large difference between the two. The first thing that I want to check is, with the Find Characters chip, whether or not you can roll a duplicate. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add five characters. All right, party. Yes. All right, I have the first five in this area, and I'm expecting that I'm going to get duplicates because Phantom Foxy's a 1 in 27, so the most rare character here. This is to show that there's not reroll logic going until you find a character that's actually a hit. All right, and I'll double check that with the next set of tests as well, but let me walk around Fazbear Hills here, so I have a 1 in 27 chance of getting Phantom Foxy. So, pretty good chance, if there's no reroll, that you're not going to get Phantom Foxy. Okay, no? So that's, I mean, that shows that. Let me do the next test now, that was, that was simple. Alright, the next test. I'm going to delete all of these characters that I just added. So now I'm going to have no characters from Fazbear Hills. Yep, missing the six there. Let's go and wander around, and every time that I get a character, so a new challenger, I'm going to delete that character from the save file, and this is going to check what percentage to expect if you have any chance of any character with the Find Characters chip. I'm expecting it to be pretty high, if not 100%. If someone will actually show up. There we go. And there are a few parts to this test that I want to do as well. All right, that's one and one so far. Okay. Without the fine characters chip, I'm actually going to automate. Because I'm expecting a much lower percentage with that. I've deleted Phantom Chica. In this area, mathematically, Phantom Freddy is the most common acquisition, 8 and 27, then JJ with 7 and 27, and then BB with 6 and 27, or 2 and 9. So this would be a 2 and 9. Alright. Got BB, but unfortunately I will have to relinquish BB. Sorry, BB. I may see you again. So far we're 2 for 2. I'm just going to keep going for a little while. And I guess I could throw this in a scenario for automation as well. But I really think this is a one and one If you have any chance of anyone, you're going to get a new challenger. And Freddy! 8 and 27. And this is speaking after battles with normal enemies. Let's delete Phantom Freddy. Save. And I love that you can do that kind of a, a hot save on that. <laughs> So, and just to show you as well, yeah, so no one is actually keeping there. And technically I could just, you know, run into stuff, <laughs> as long as I'm in Fazbear Hills here. Okay, encounter, yep. Alright, Phantom Freddy again. Hey! I got you. <laughs> I'm gonna delete you all over again. Okay. Delete. Save. So that's four for four. And we have a duplicate character, <laughs> but we've deleted every single time so far. In between. Another part to this test I'm going to do after this. <laughs> and Phantom Freddy again! <laughs> oh, I see you. Alright, delete you for the third time. Save, and this time I'm actually going to run. I'm going to see if running causes the same result. So far, 5 for 5. I can extend that test way further. If I incorporate that in some automation. Let's run. There we go! Yeah, I didn't get the screen for 
increased experience or tokens. So that worked. Uh, let's delete. <laughs> delete BB again. Six for six. Same thing, I'm gonna run this time. I'm actually gonna do something a little funnier too. I'm just gonna run from Phantom Freddy. Look at this. Run. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. I didn't get credit for it because the experience and token screen didn't appear. But I can't actually... Oh, that was weird. <laughs> the bite graphic there. <laughs> you can't actually escape from a character battle unless... Okay. Unless you run out of... Like, you, you have bad RNG with your run. So if you run, you're continually going to battle the same acquisition potential. <laughs> so after every regular enemy battle, you're going to have a one in one chance with the fine character's chip. And I can run a bunch more automation to show that as well. So that's number one. If you have your fine character's chip, you should probably enable it if you still have characters to unlock. If you don't, yeah, just, you know, don't use it. But use it when you need to unlock characters for sure. Let's compare with the configuration, anything without fine characters. So let's get sure these make it quicker to go through battles. This is looking pretty good so far. So let's run the automation a little more. Interestingly, the first seven trials here came up with no character unlocked because there was no character encounter and I just had regular enemy battles. But this is a pretty nifty little thing. It's not the prettiest code I've written, but it's pretty functional, so let's see that it works with that other scenario that I'm hoping to see here. All right, I have the option to reset the save file to a previous state just in case it unlocks a character and then the game crashes because I don't want to have any characters unlocked. All right, we'll get to that in a little bit as well because I'm going to manipulate the save file so that I have equal odds every time of getting any sort of character, and that's what I want in this case. All right, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the automation, it's going to wait three seconds, give you the chance to stop if you want. It's going to walk Freddy up and down because you have to be moving to get a regular enemy battle, all right? So it's throwing W and S key keystrokes, virtual keys, and then it's going to check if you had a battle by checking if the save file has changed. And it's looking at Freddy's experience and level. If Freddy's experience or level change, then a battle has occurred. All right, because you don't always get FAS tokens, so I didn't check FAS tokens on this, but the experience will always go up. All right, even just by one if it's <laughs> Anim Dude. But anyway, so Freddy's walking up and down. We're going to have a regular enemy encounter. All right. The file is going to change. It's going to check now the next seven seconds. It's going to look for a navy blue color that's characteristic to the a new challenger has appeared graphic. So it's checking a 30 by 30 region on the screen to see if that navy blue is there. If so, then it's gonna detect, hey, this is a character encounter here. So a new challenger has appeared. All right, we have JJ. So it reset the save file after it detected that a character was there. Now it's gonna check again, see when it changes. It's gonna check the modified date. It actually was pretty instant there. And it did update correctly, good. And it detected that there was an extra line and it reported it to the log on the left. So it says 10 have equals one. That's an unlock for JJ. Then it resets the file again so that I have none of them unlocked out of this area again. And then I want to rerun the trial. So it's replicable, it's repeatable. Yeah, it's basically resetting the state, state zero and then running it again, equal chance all that so let me run this for a while this is looking pretty good one out of 11 that's it so if it doesn't find that navy blue on screen it's it's gonna wait that seven second period and then it's like okay well i'm gonna keep going so there's there's no character and that's it that's plenty of time too all right cool Two sets of data without the fine characters chip selected. All right, this computer right here had 600 trials. 
132 of them actually roll for a character. That's not very good. 22%. Then the one downstairs that I ran the executable on, 134 out of 584 actually rolled for a character. So 22.95%. So regular enemy encounters without the fine characters chip. If you average, well, if you total those up and you find the proportion here, so 266 divided by 1184, 22.47%. 1184 is the N, 266 is the X. I want a 95% confidence level. So, let me just, I'll, I'll share the screen here. Get rid of this right here. You see this? The 95% confidence range doesn't even include 20 or 25. It's right on the edge. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not 20% or 25%. It could be either one still, but with more and more data, it's looking less and less likely. So we could have a two and nine, we could have a nine and 40, I don't know. 22.2 .2 repeating percent would be two of nine and 22.5% would be nine out of 40. It could be something completely different. There could be some confounding factors in there as well. I don't know if the number of enemies at a time influences how likely a role for a character is. I don't know whether a certain time of the game, for example, if you play the first hour of the game and Scott didn't want you to unlock a whole lot of characters up front, but you needed to unlock more later, maybe the odds would go up over time. I don't know. You know, I actually did a sample size of 61 and ended up with 15 being roles for characters with the hour variable being 90. So I simulated it being 90 hours into the game. That's slightly under 25%. So I don't know if at the start of the game you have about a 20% chance, but then it slowly goes up to 25. I don't know. I would need infinity points to tell for certain. And at the same time, if there's a confounding factor in there, we could always be confounded. So that's the tricky part. <laughs> Statistics is really fun for me, and I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I know it's not the video for everyone, but I think the big takeaway is use your find characters chip, if at all possible, when you're searching for characters. I made a video about the unlockability odds of all characters in all areas of Five Nights at Freddy's World. Spring Bonnie has about a 1 in 261 chance from a regular enemy in Pinwheel Funhouse. Only Pinwheel Funhouse, unfortunately. Those aren't very good odds, so it's going to take a long time to get Spring Bonnie on average. Yeah, you could get Spring Bonnie on your first roll, but there's a greater chance that it's going to take a really long time. <laughs> so if you don't have your fine characters chip equipped, you're doing yourself a big disservice because you got to multiply how many rolls it would take with the fine characters chip equipped and selected, all that, by either four, four and a half, or five, somewhere in that range. So you're going to take a whole lot longer to get a successful roll. That's just not fun, all right? So find characters chip, definitely a necessity if you're trying to unlock your characters. After you're done, find another chip because you don't need it, but until you have all your characters, it does you a big service, all right? That's about it. That's the point of the video. I did do the automation, same thing, but I equipped the find characters chip, and lo and behold, 100%, but I'll play that in a sped up motion, a <laughs> uh, thousand percent or something. So you can enjoy that. But thanks for watching, everyone. Peace. God bless you. Have a great day. Hope you're doing well. And uh, I'll check you next video. <laughs> Peace. Also, if you need to find the find characters chip to make your character finding much more expeditious, then go to World 5, Black Tomb Yard. There's a mine there called Deep Metal Mine. It's a tiny one. But you're going to work your way around to the top left. You're going to have a battle with Mad Endo. And after that, you can keep going up. And there's the chest with the find characters chip. All right, that's it. Cool.